So it's now my great pleasure to introduce you to one of our titanium partners, a leader of one of the most highly respected consulting firms in the world. Everyone, please welcome to the stage the chair and CEO for Deloitte Consulting LLP, Dan Helfrich. All right, what's happening out in Equal? Robert, to, to echo your words from earlier today and on behalf of other like-minded CEOs and on behalf of Deloitte, we are here and we're not going anywhere. Look, I feel incredibly privileged to be here with all of you today to help kick off this year's summit. I am Dan Helfrich, my pronouns are he, him. I am the chair and CEO of Deloitte Consulting. I'm a proud teammate of the 386 Deloitte professionals participating in this year's summit. That felt like more like 382. I think a few people had a late night. Um, look, I love this year's theme of we are. And this morning, I'm going to riff a bit on that theme, who we are as members of this community, as allies, as individuals, and as a collective group of people committed to realizing measurable and lasting equity for LGBTQ plus talent, full stop. I will say that again, as people committed to realizing measurable and lasting equity for LGBTQ plus talent. We are in this room and at our workplaces the summation of more than one identity. I identify as a white, cisgender, heterosexual male. I'm having a good day, which I hope all of you are. I'm a husband to Christy for 23 years, a father to four teenagers. I like all of them right now, which is pretty unique. I'm the son, I'm the oldest of seven kids. I'm an athlete, I'm a consultant, I'm a broadcaster a play-by-play -play sports broadcaster for the Georgetown University men's soccer team. I'm the team captain for Deloitte Consulting. I end up on stages a lot talking to thousands and tens of thousands of people, but I'm an introvert. And I am, above anything else, a leader in training. Now, speaking without knowing all 5,000 of you, I think it's safe to say that we all live our lives at this intersection of who we are based on how we identify, where we grew up, the makeup of our given and chosen families, all of that and more creates our lived experiences. We're all complex, complex beings that are a summation of all of those aspects. Now, in my role, I hear a ton of generalizations, generalizations about how a certain generation feels or how a specific community feels about an issue. And I see it as my job to question and push back on those generalizations, as generalizations don't allow for the nuances that exist with any community, including this one. So as you go through this year's summit and then return to your workplaces, I encourage you to challenge the generalizations you hear, to ask deeper questions and look for more detailed answers, because understanding those details can lead to more impactful solutions. So one way at Deloitte that we're working to better understand our people's many intersections and identities is through expanding our self-identification options, or self-ID. Using a data-driven approach, we allow for self-reporting along a number of categories, race, ethnicity, military, military spouse, disability, caregiver. We also disaggregate sex and gender. For gender identity, our expanded options aim to capture the full spectrum of gender and for people who identify as transgender. We take that same approach for sexual orientation, expanding our self-ID options. Look, our goal was twofold. One, to understand the nuanced and complex identities of the more than 80,000 Deloitte teammates I have in the US, and create an experience for our people that better supports how our people define themselves. Now, while I'm proud about how we've matured our self-ID efforts, we are always trying 
to do better. Because despite our best efforts, we as a collection of humans are by our very nature imperfect. I am imperfect. And I call myself a leader in training because I'm learning from my team, my family, my clients every day. But let me be clear. Being imperfect isn't an excuse. The fact that we're imperfect is an opportunity. It's a reason to continue to learn, to grow, and be a better, less imperfect human. But we must recognize when we have more to learn and then act on those learnings. And we launched this incredible Deloitte DEI Institute recently. And we've been doing some research on covering in collaboration with NYU. And while I know this crowd is a well-informed group of advocates, just so we're on the same page, the definition of covering we used is when an individual downplays a disfavored identity to fit into the mainstream. Covering is an issue we can all do more to address. So let me share the data. According to our study that will be released this fall, 60% 6-0 of total respondents say that they have covered at work within the last 12 months. 60%. And here's where I got a little depressed. We did a similar study 10 years ago. The same type of question. 61%. We have a long way to go. The percentage of LGBTQ plus respondents who cover is 10 percentage points higher than the average. And if you look deeper into the data, because again, we don't want to generalize, black, Hispanic, and Asian LGBTQ plus professionals have even higher rates of covering to overwhelming majorities. This feeling that someone needs to cover might mean they're emotionally drained. It can impact well-being. It can impact mental health. And it certainly impacts performance at work and loyalty to the team. It's exhausting when you can't be yourself. But there is some hope in the survey, too. This is an opportunity to improve and make change and become a little less imperfect. Respondents do feel that their organizations can help reduce the demand to cover. And one way we can address this issue is by raising it with team leaders and continuing to educate them about the impact of covering and ways to build trust and more supportive environments. It means asking allies like me within your organization to support the, their LGBTQ plus coworkers by being educated on community and how to demonstrate support for a coworker. We are allies and that necessitates, it necessitates action on covering a lot more. Now, as an ally for this community, I'm committed to keep learning, to keep spending time with all of you. Yesterday, I was fortunate to spend time with my Deloitte teammates who are here. And look, it was all things. It was hilarious. It was inspiring. It was thought-provoking. It was difficult. It was informative. It was fun. And as a leader in training, it again was humbling because there is so much I don't know, and so much more I need to learn. So I was again proven right that a leader in training, and there is more to do that I can personally do to be better. At Deloitte, we like to think of allyship as an action word, almost a verb. Allyship is the practice of empathizing with the experience of systemically disadvantaged groups, looking out for biases, which we all have, and actively using a voice and a power to advance equity. And if you have a platform and a voice like I do, you better use it in that way. There are capabilities and skills required to be an ally. It can be taught and reinforced what to say, what not to say, how to engage in helpful conversations, how to speak up for teammates in difficult situations. We've actually created a series of trainings I'm really proud of called Say This, Not That. They help our people be more inclusive. That focus on allyships, the trainings, and the time we've invested is one way we're committed to this community, to the complex, diverse group of individuals at Deloitte who identify as LGBTQ+. We're committed to being an ally and fostering a culture in which individuals feel empowered, comfortable to be themselves, and supported in their professional development. And at a time where we must acknowledge the external environment the world outside our four walls of Deloitte feels more complicated, more stressful, tiring, and even defeating at times. We are committed to all of our teammates, 
The culture we'll bu we're building is focused on professional development and advancement, as well as support and benefits in healthcare, such as transgender healthcare coverage and a new adoption and surrogacy reimbursement program. And through the nearly 200,000 people we have as part of our U.S. team and 450,000 around the world, yes, we're big. And then the clients, the families, and friends of our team members, we can influence how those outside our walls treat and support one another. It is clearly in the daily experiences, how we treat each other, how we behave every day, that reveal our organization's culture. And those everyday behaviors can help people be their authentic selves and thrive at work. In collaborating with organizations like Out and Equal and alongside amazing leaders like Aaron, we are committed to improving and strengthening our culture and to realize a measurable and lasting equity for LGBTQ plus talent. Look, I want to close by telling you a story and maybe sharing with you a smile that I received from one of my mentees, Chloe, on Friday. Chloe just earned the biggest honor in our firm, which is becoming a partner. And I asked her, what was the highlight of the last few weeks since this was announced? And Chloe, who identifies as queer, didn't hesitate for a single second. She said it was receiving an official corporate email to our entire community with the names of the more than 20 new LGBTQ plus partners across Deloitte. And then the hundreds of messages she received as a result from people beaming with pride. Representation matters. And guess what? No way that message gets sent three years ago. Something seemingly small, like self-ID, creates the ability for something seemingly small, like a formal official congratulations message at a big enterprise like Deloitte. Seemingly small, and yet perhaps not so small in the bigger picture. So much progress made, so much more to make. Thanks. It's a huge privilege to be here. Have an incredible week.